Hey everybody, it's Vicki with Dementia with Grace. How is everybody doing today? I hope y'all are doing great. Today we're talking about the behavior management system. <laughs> the Grace Behavior Management System. Now, um, as I have said in previous videos, I was a facility social worker for a very long time. Um, then I helped develop a dementia care unit, a memory care unit for the facility I was in. And then they in turn used that information that uh, uh, behavior management system across facilities in the southwest and uh, southeast southeast we are definitely in the southeast conference anyway side note um and now i i started this channel um as in well alongside of the group on facebook um the dementia with uh, Grace Caregiver Support Group on Facebook. It's easy to find. There's a link down here. Um, so I started the channel and the group about the same time, about four years ago, and they wanted me to write a book. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. So I did, and it turned into the, the first edition of Dementia with Grace, and then now it's turned into the second edition of Dementia with Grace, a new positive way of dealing with behaviors in people with dementia second edition because I wrote the first edition and then there were questions about you know about the system and how it works and how it is applicable and the stages and you know all of that so I had to go back and add um, some information and I added some case studies how to use the grace um, because grace isn't an acronym um, so let's get into it um, inside this book dementia with grace you can order it on Amazon um, there is an appendix that sh that really highlights the exact what we're talking about. Um, gap G, gather important details. R, routine or reminisce. A, always assess. And inside A is pick them. Um, we are assessing pick them. Pain, infection, constipation, environment, and med change. And uh, C is calm and E is excite. Now gather important details, the G in grace, um, is about gathering information about the person with dementia. And there are questions in here, and there is a, a, a um, let's see, let me get to the question chapter. Um, there are questions in here about, you know, what is your name? Um, who are you named after? What do you prefer to be called? And then it goes into the childhood, um, and then, you know, young adulthood, middle adulthood, education and work, miscellaneous. But this is, you can print this inside of our group um, and uh, get the gather work tool. Um, what it is, is trying to understand who the person is, who the person has been. As you know, if you have dealt with dementia in any capacity, that a person with dementia can talk about their long past when they cannot tell you what they have for breakfast, when they cannot tell you what day it is, when they cannot tell you who the current president is, they can talk about their childhood. They can talk about their time in high school. They can talk about their first car, their first sweetheart. They can talk about college and their early work, um, their proudest accomplishments. You know, they can talk about all of those things because those are very, very sticky memories that stay deep in the recesses um, of our brain. So what we are trying to accomplish with the gather tool is to gather all of that information in one place so that when a behavior emerges and we need to find something else to talk about or we need to find a way to redirect the person or we need to find a way to calm the person down or a way to excite the person, CE, we can use information from the gather tool to accomplish those goals, to do, to redirect to engage, to calm down, to excite. So that's what you do with gather. R is for routine or reminisce. Now reminisce is exactly what I just talked about, using the information from the gather tool to, um, to uh, interrupt a behavioral loop, to redirect a behavioral loop, um, to, to stop a behavior or start a better behavior a different behavior um, and 
you know, because not all behavior is bad behavior. Not all behavior is negative behavior. Some behaviors can be positive. In one of my facilities that I was consulting with, we had a lady who had been a mail sorter. She was a person in the post office that sorted all the mail. And she was so agitated and she just could not be still and she could not um, figure out what to do with herself. And she was interrupting, you know, everybody else on the unit. She was causing a lot of disruption. Um, and she just was lost. And when I did the gather tool with her and her family, she could, she could answer some questions. Her family had to fill in the blanks on some other questions. Um, we, you know, found out that information that she had been a mail sorter for, I mean, like 40 or 50 years. I mean, like that's all she did for a job. And so we got her a, um, cubby hole type situation and gave her all the junk mail from the facility and allowed her to, you know, we would write numbers. The, the, the staff did this. They wrote numbers, um, you know, one, two, three, I don't know how many cubby holes there were. And then they numbered the cubby holes and she could match the number of the mail to the number of the cubby hole. And that's what she did all day long. She loved it. It calmed her down. It gave her purpose. Um, it fulfilled that need of being useful, being productive, being helpful working all of those unmet needs that you know apparently she was still connected to that time in her life where she really wanted to be useful and that was the way that she had always been useful so we just figured out that so there's lots of strategy sessions that you know and i and i offer strategy sessions um consulting whatever to talk with you about you know some ideas about how to calm the behavior in your life but that was that's just an example of how we use the gather tool to see calm her g-r-a-c-e assess um is we are always assessing a person we are kind of like a hover mother um, we're always assessing um the physical self of a person the medical side of things um, you know, whether or not they have had uh, a bowel movement in the last three days. I mean, there's, you know, journals you can keep and all of that kind of stuff. We'll go into that in later videos, different videos. But it's handy to have all that information because if a person is having a new or worsening behavior and you realize that, you know what, I don't think, I don't think they've had a bowel movement this week. That can cause serious behaviors. A UTI can cause serious, serious behaviors. Um, and there's, there's ways to, the book goes into all of that about how to um, read, um, how to read a person's body language and how to, um, when, when they're nonverbal, when they're the nonverbal indications of pain, the nonverbal indications of infection, of constipation. So it goes into that. C is calm. Again, we used our information that we had gathered to calm this person down. Sometimes a person is just getting too much stimulus. They're getting too much data. Um, that maybe there's too much noise or there's too much movement in the room, in their environment. Um, they need to be somewhere quiet uh, and separated and silent so that they can, you know, uh, work on calming them, their own selves down, um, being self-soothing and all of that. Excite or engage, some people call it E, engage, and I do too it sometimes, um, because so many other people do. Excite is just that. Somebody might be bored, and that may be why they're pacing, or why they're sundowning, or why they're um, shadowing you. They're just bored. They don't know what to do with themselves. And so um, we talk about how to excite a person with dementia. And that is, um, you know, what, what to get, what to introduce, introduce puzzles, introduce um, YouTube videos. Um, and that can be for calm or excite. There's just a lot. There's a lot to it. And there's, and that's why I wrote it down in the book. Um, because I wanted to have a guide for people that were in the homes um, that, you know, are, or lay people medically. I mean, they, they don't, you know, they don't have the medical. I came from a medical model. And when I first started helping folks on Facebook and inside the group um, and on this YouTube channel, I, I realized that there was a, there was a knowledge gap. There was just a knowledge gap between things that I took for, took for granted. Um, because, you know, it's just something that I know to check. It's because I've been in the medical model so long. 
there's things if if i were to go into you know a different field right now some of the things that i would have questions about would be something that you have done all your life and you know you're like well i thought you would know that and so you can't take for granted that people know things that 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 you know and that's part of the reason why i had to write the second edition of the book to answer some of those questions that i just assumed um that people would know and it's been such a journey it's been such a good journey um of of helping and meeting needs of caregivers not to mention meeting the needs of the people with dementia um but meeting the needs of caregivers as well um i love what i do and I love who I do it for. I hope that these um, short introductory videos help when you are trying to figure out what are you gonna do about the aggression in your person, the agitation, being mean to the family, you know, false accusations, you stole my money, you stole my money, um, or where have you been so long when they don't have a, a sense of time and you maybe have gone to the grocery store and you, you had only been gone, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes and you come back and they're just mad and they say, where have you been? You've been gone all afternoon. When in reality you haven't been, but their sense of time is distorted. Their sense of reality is distorted. And we have to learn what those behaviors mean. You know, it, unless, unless you're taught that a, person's, a person with dementia's time can be distorted and they don't understand yesterday, today, and tomorrow. They have no concept sometimes of the passage of time. They have time blindness. Then, you know, you're like, what did I do wrong? I mean, I, there's no way that I've, I have not been gone two hours. I mean, I know I have not been gone two hours. And so you make it all about you and what did you do wrong? And why are they so mad at you? When, when you have a little bit of education about dementia, you can say, oh, you know what, I understand that it did feel like a long time to them. And then so the response can simply be, oh, I bet it did feel like a long time. Let me show you what I got. I found these cookies, da, 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 da. I found some, uh, something new to try, or I decided while I was shopping that we are going to have um, meatloaf real exciting we're gonna find you know we're gonna have you know i don't know something good for supper and it, and it gets them from well, why have you been gone so long to out of that behavioral loop to looking forward to something in the future they might not know hey we've got to wait it's three hours to supper but if they even don't know if they have time blindness they still usually can can latch on to breakfast lunch and dinner and so you can talk about dinner or supper and you know know that that is something that they can wait for i hope that makes sense it is so interesting to me it's a hard hard journey it's a hard hard journey but it's a very interesting journey and if i think if you change it from that perspective of oh this is so hard to yes it is hard but there's information out there i'm not the only person that does videos on youtube uh tipa snow is wonderful um she's a presenter she's an occupational therapist and she is a presenter and she has she has videos um dr natalie has uh dementia care blazers that's another youtube channel um that you could you might be interested in um dementia success path and krista uh, Montague, she just got married. I think it's Montague. Um, she has a YouTube channel, Dementia. Um, I just said it and now it's gone again. Dementia Success Path. So anyway, look up all of those. There's lots of help out there. I mean, there's tons of stuff to read on the internet, but there's a lot of good videos that demonstrate, TIPA demonstrates behaviors in action which is helpful it's very helpful she has a hand over hand technique that she does um in, in functional helping functional uh behaviors um and anyway it's it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of information out there so you don't have to be out wandering around and trying to figure out you know what is going on my book you know obviously I would love if you would pick up a copy of my book. It's a labor of love, um, and it's over on Amazon. I don't advertise it enough, I guess, but um, 
anyway, it's, it's been a really good tool for folks to understand, you know, what behaviors are, what they're about, what to do about them. Again, and I've got lots of videos here. So anyway, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. And I will, I'm very responsive to the questions. I try to answer questions um, throughout the day and get back with you. You can also join the group over on Facebook, the Dementia with Grace Caregiver Support Group and leave information over there if you want more responses than just the response that I can give. I suggest going over there um, because it's a bunch of geniuses over there in that group. People that are in the trenches alongside you doing it. I have a special set of skills that I bring to the table because I have experienced so many types of dementia in so many types of people, in so many different families, in different situations, that I bring a lot of experience and knowledge to the table. But those folks are doing it every day, day in and day out, and they understand how tiring it is and how frustrating it can be and how lost you can feel and how guilty and, you know, full of, regret sometimes and you know um and then the happy moments that anybody else would think why is that a big deal they know why it's a big deal so it's just handy to be over there anyway i love the sunlight coming through you know i'm not a videographer i have said that before in these videos um so i never know what the lighting should be and i probably should be back here or i should probably be over there but to me um just getting the information out there is is good and sometimes good is better than perfect right done is better than perfect i love y'all i'll talk to you later bye